Yahoo! Welcome, my beautiful brothers and sisters, fellow radiators of love. My name is Jamal Pope, aka J Phoenix. This is going to be your weekend astrology forecast for this Saturday and Sunday, October 7th and 8th of 2023. Trusting you guys are having a wonderful day so far. Hopefully, you guys had a wonderful weekend. Hopefully, you guys have a a fun weekend planned ahead for you guys. Even though we do have some pretty massive changes that are occurring this weekend, some shifts, some tensions that are definitely building and coming exact, let's go ahead and hop right into it, shall we? All right, so starting off, of course, on Saturday, October 7th, you see that we do have this moon here at 24 degrees starting off the day, and it does actually square the nodes today. And I would say that as far as these energies, this moon is pretty strong. It's in the higher degrees of Cancer. It's in the deck and ruled by Neptune. Neptune is at home. So that gives the moon a little bit of extra juice, extra power. But swearing the nodes, and uh, this can be interesting. It's like, how do we really feel about our destiny, especially when it comes to spiritual matters? You know, are we really, are we kind of like following the crowd? Are we doing what we think other people want us to do, want us to be? Are we doing what... You know, we feel like it's going to get us accepted by other people and, you know, being the graces of other people. Or are we going to kind of go our own way and, you know, actually fight for who we really are? You know, I think that's really what it comes down to. But not in a place where you're just displaying your wounds and just kind of showing people like your scars. I look at this scar, look at this festering wound and stuff like that. You know, I've been talking about Chiron as far as that goes. But are we going to kind of take those quirks, you know, our superpowers, utilize them in a way that actually gives us a rocket booster in life instead of just displaying them and trying to gain some sort of victim currency out of it? It's kind of it's a weird time, especially with the sun and fall, on Mars and detriment, Mercury is in Libra, which is it's fine. It's in the air sign at the, at the least, but definitely try to find some balance. So, I mean, this moon trying to find the balance between the south node is also going to square the it's going to square Mars today and it's going to oppose Pluto. So we're going to see that cardinal T cross today. This moon, even though it has a lot of power, even though it is strong, doesn't mean that it's not going to experience some challenges and some some discourse, some tension, if you will. And we can go ahead and just kind of fast forward to that and look at that energy. Right. So we're going to see this moon. <clears throat> As Mars clicks on the 27 degrees, the moon clicks on the 27 degrees, right? And they're also going to be an aspect to Pluto. Now, remember what I said, Mars is the foot soldier and Pluto is the executioner. And now we have the moon over here in Cancer filling this whole thing out. This is going to be a bit of a doozy. Now, now as far as like the score of these planets, if I were to give these planets a score... The moon is at 183, okay? That's really high. The highest it could possibly be is 185. And it will it gets to 185 <clears throat> once it does hit 29 degrees. So we're going to experience today the strongest the moon that can be, right? And here's the thing about this. This very strong moon that we are experiencing, we have been experiencing, <clears throat> excuse me, we have been experiencing very strong moons so our emotions have been very strong and stuff since Neptune has gone in the Pisces. So whenever the moon gets into these high degrees of cancer, it has a very strong score. Now, Mars is going to be at 106 and Pluto is at 131. So you would think that with these scores, the moon's going to get the upper hand. That's not necessarily the case. Just because it has a higher score doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to win in this challenge or this tension. It simply means that its influence is going to be a little bit more. Save if these energies are contributed to, you know, I mean, you have the opposition, and then of course you have Mars that's squaring both. And even if you wanted to take it a step further, you can say that there's a cardinal cross here. But like I said, Mars is, they're all within three degrees, you know, maybe two and a half degrees of the North Node. But I'm really just going to be focusing on these three planets. If a transit or aspects like this is like a recipe for food, right? This just means that the moon, as far as the ingredients of the moon that goes into this aspect, it's just more. More doesn't necessarily mean better, you know? So that just means that when it comes to the three ingredients of this particular aspect, 
Mars has the fewest amount that's going into it as far as the measurement. Pluto's somewhere in the middle. The moon has a lot. So that's the thing, though. Is this cake going to come out well? You know what I'm saying? Like, depending upon the way that you do these ingredients, it can determine the consistency of the final end product. Like, I know if you add, like, maybe more sugar or more butter or different kind of flour to, you know, cookies that, so, that you make, it can determine the outcome and the consistency of it. So think of, like, these scores, if you will, these power scores when I'm coming up with it, and I will do a video where I break this down for you guys so it makes sense. Think of it as like when they're aspecting each other, the planets and stuff, that it's more of like an ingredient that kind of goes into it. And it just shows the the amount or the influence of it. You know, it can influence the flavor. It's like you can make, you can bake a cake, right? But you can use a different kind of sugar. You can use a different kind of frosting and it's going to affect the outcome of it, right? So this T-square, with Mars, Pluto, and the moon is really going to be bringing up some tension and some challenging aspects when it comes to, I mean, think about this. Libra here, Sun's here, Mars is here, trying to find some balance, but the south node is here. This is a this is a very strange weekend where we're trying to maybe find some sort of balance in our life. And since it's Mars that's over here, that's trying to find the balance between the moon and it's like the executioners here and then the moon is here this is like the family right saying it's like oh no don't go and do that thing but the executioner's like yo i gotta take care of business and mars is sitting here like well hold on pluto wait a minute wait a minute wait maybe you know maybe we should maybe we should listen to the moon maybe we should listen to the family you know the loved ones maybe we should listen to what they say maybe they're going to come and defend this individual right and maybe that's what the the North Node is. And Pluto's like, no, Mars, you didn't do your job, okay? You didn't do your job. You didn't take out this individual like Saturn wanted. You didn't do your job. So now I got to come in and do your job for you. The moon's going to be coming in here, throwing all of these different things out, is like trying to find some sort of compassion here, trying to find some type of like, yo, how can we, you know, are you taking the emotions of everything into consideration and how people feel and stuff? And Pluto's like, no, I don't care about that. Like, it's, 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 this is a T square where Pluto is probably going to get the upper hand. I'm not even gonna lie. Even though the moon is very strong in Cancer, probably going to be Pluto that has the upper hand because Pluto's like, look, these are the facts of reality. This is the facts of what's happening. The system is transforming. And if you're unwilling to transform with the system, then you're not going to have a good time. You're not going to be able to climb that Capricorn mountain and get that success. You're not going to be able to, you know, play the game. And there can be some hangups on that because some people may not want to play the game, you know, the way that Pluto is kind of transforming things to be, right? It's gonna be it's gonna be a weird one. I'm not gonna lie with this side with this. Now, what's interesting about this too is that during this T square, albeit the moon comes off of it exactly, but you're going to see Venus come out of shadow finally today. This happens around 5:26 p.m. So Venus comes out of shadow, the moon at 29 degrees doesn't quite go void, of course, and makes a semi-sextile over to Venus. Now, the semi-sextile, it's, it's a minor aspect. It's almost sort of like a text message between the two, right? So the moon comes off of that spot. It's 29 degrees. Venus at 29 degrees. It clicks fully into it around this time. And this is like the last hurrah. Um, the reason why this is the last hurrah is because Venus is about to go into Virgo, right? where it falls, right? It's exalted in Pisces and it falls in Virgo, which means that its power score is about to go down. And Venus just went through a stressful, stressful retrograde and and whole, you know, transit through Leo where it had to square Jupiter and Uranus three times. Not easy, excuse me, not easy energy. So 29 degrees, 
this definitely feels like a last hurrah, especially with a Mars that hasn't even fully squared Pluto yet, mind you. That builds up throughout the whole weekend. So Mars hasn't even fully squared Pluto yet. Moon comes off of it where it's like, hey, hey, guys, I know you guys are, you know, talking about this thing, you know, Pluto, you might want to consider these emotions and these sort of things that I'm feeling, whatever like that. And Mars, you know, you might want to consider these things, too. And then the moon dips. Right. And Pluto's like, OK, well, now that we've been, you know, interrupted by the moon, Mars, let's get back to you. Let's get back to you, Mars. You know, what are you going to do? What actions are you going to take? Are you going to take actions based off of what everyone else wants you to do? Or are you actually going to trust your instincts, right? And Mars is like, look, I'm just trying to get to Scorpio, right? Pluto, can I get to Scorpio and then we can kind of reconvene and we can kind of talk this thing out? And Pluto's like, no. No, you got to make a decision. <laughs> right? You got to make a decision, right? You got to take some action. 2 plus 7 is 9. 9 is Mars in numerology. So you got to take some action. Moon freaking dips. About to get into Leo, which the moon probably wants to catch up to Venus, but Venus is going to move into Virgo before the moon can even catch up. Venus exits shadow. Her power score is about 132, which is just one point higher than Pluto. So this is why I'm saying, like, you really want to be careful today because with a challenging aspect with the T-square and stuff like that, or maybe some information comes up, this could be a day where we could get triggered emotionally and stuff. And then when Venus clicks into that final degree and it's super intense, right? Mind you, it is in the Deccan ruled by Mars, and Mars is not in a great place in Libra. Granted, it's going to feel a lot better when it gets to Scorpio, but this is definitely – a moment of potential desperation where we feel like we have to do something radical to change everything because where we feel like we are right now, maybe we're not shiny enough. Maybe we're not gold enough. Maybe we're not, you know, we, we just are trying to do anything to try and feel better about our situation. This is a des This is a moment of desperation. Don't get too caught up in what may come up though through this because you don't want to take some sort of action that dramatically alters the course of your life because you think it's going to bring you the edge that you want the excitement that you want the love that you want the money that you want the insert whatever that you want the happiness that you want the joy and the passion because you want to do something that makes you feel the vigor for life but it's wild, it's radical, and it's not going to lead you. It's not the grass is not green on the other side. I'm sorry. It's not. Don't get sucked in today. Do not get sucked into the Venus games at the end of Leo. Don't do it. Mars in, has not fully squared Pluto, which is why you really want to wait this shit out. Because if you take some sort of action today and you're super impulsive about it and Mars hasn't fully squared Pluto, Pluto can really bring down the hammer. I think there's a definitely an element of transformation that's happening this weekend, but we don't want to force the transformation. We want this to happen naturally and organically. The moon moves into Leo, right? And then, of course, as we continue this thing forward, of course, you see that the sun here at 14 degrees of Libra coming closer to the opposition with Chiron, but it's not going to happen exactly this weekend. Mars still hasn't squared Pluto exactly, so but it's still it's squared it's at the same degree. It's not at the same minute. So we're going to be feeling this the entire weekend, this want to sort of be impulsive. It's almost sort of like since Pluto is going to be like, Mars, you, you got to do the job. You got to complete the job. And then this is where Mars – goes overboard, right? Spe especially with the Venus here at the last degree of Leo. This is when Mars is like, okay, fine. Since I messed this up, I'm going to do this thing and this thing and this thing and this thing. Are you happy now, Pluto? And Pluto's just going to be like, 
I didn't ask you to do all that stuff, but you know, here are going to be the consequences of you doing that now. You know what I mean? We we only put a hit out on this one person. You decide to go take take out ten other people. I didn't ask you to do that. I only asked you to take care of this one person. Now I got eleven. Now I have a total of eleven bodies to fucking deal with, Mars. Thanks you. Thank you very much for doing making my job harder. Thank you for making my job harder. And if you don't think that this shit is not going, it's not going to catch up to you, Mars. I'm not, I'm not going to be able to just cover for you on this one. That's the thing about this. It's like with the square right like this too. We could be we'll be looking at Pluto's like, can you cover me on this one? Pluto Pluto's like, I ain't gonna cover you on this one. These are your actions, you gotta deal with the consequences of it. All right? Moon moves into Leo, which you know, like I said, moon it's at its strongest in cancer. When the moon's in Leo, it like it wants to be the star, if you will. And you're going to see, you know, early Sunday morning, you're gonna see the moon. Which is going to sextile the sun. Um, moon is going to sextile Mercury, right? Here at six degrees. Now, Venus twenty nine thirty two, Mars twenty seven thirty two. They are still. I mean, Mars is still not fully squared Pluto yet. That moon, when it clicks on to six degrees, you know, this is going to be an interesting one. They both have pretty similar scores. The moon has a score of one eleven. Mercury has a score of one sixteen. So they're pretty similar, and it's a sextile, so there's an opportunity that comes up. I feel like at least with Sunday, like waking up into Sunday, if you make it through Saturday, you make it through the tension and the challenges, and you wake up Sunday, you can definitely feel a little bit more refreshed. You can be like, okay, this is an opportunity for us to really see the positive side of things, that even when things seem imbalanced, even when it seems that life is unfair, that we can still – See the beauty in that. And I think that's what this moon sextile Mercury is going to give us the opportunity is to see the beauty in life, see the beauty in our lives, despite the fact that things may seem imbalanced and unfair, despite the fact that we may want to kind of like, you know, there's this element where we kind of want to like rebel against the world, rebel against authority and all that sort of stuff. This provides this nice little opportunity for us to see the beauty. So I think Sunday morning would be a great opportunity to do some type of med- meditation, to have that, you know, to strengthen that relationship with the divine, with God, with spirit, whatever it is that you, you know, whatever it is that you do, right? Whatever you want to call it. But I think it's a great opportunity to really acknowledge that connection because you're going to need it. Why? Because well, Venus ingresses into Virgo today. So it's like, Venus is still feeling fired up. It's almost like this is literally like that last hurrah, right? Before she goes into Virgo. This is like where she's trying. She's like getting super drunk. You know what I mean? She's getting super drunk the night before she has to leave, you know, her vacation and make her way back home. You know, and it's, you got to think of, and here's the thing that you got to think about this too. It's like Venus is it's moving into Virgo it's in its fall position. It'd rather be in Libra, and Virgo is the 12th house to Libra. So this is about to get very spiritual and very weird and shit, too. So this is definitely a moment here in the morning where we just want to acknowledge and, I think, appreciate the things that we have in our life and what's going on. If anything, an attitude of gratitude is really going to be the key to Sunday. Why? Well, you're going to see, of course, and it's towards the end of the day, because, I mean, you're going to see this moon. It's going to hit, you know, 13 degrees, and then, bam, well, you saw that, right? So you're going to see what's interesting about this is that you see Venus 2958. Look at Mars 2752, 2753. The moment in the within the hour towards the end of the day, 12 hours later, mind you, from the moon sextiling Mercury. Literally 12 hours later, click, Venus, zero, zero, Virgo. Mars, 2754, 2753. It clicks, 926 PM, this clicks. Venus ingresses into Virgo and immediately loses power immediately loses power. She goes from 132 to 60. Her power is cut in half. 
Just like that. Just like that. So this can definitely feel, especially because Mars, at least down to the minutes, so maybe subtle, moves past Pluto as far as the square goes. So you feel this building up, you feel this building up, you feel this building up, the desire to be impulsive, desire to change things, and then bam, Venus moves into a spot where she loses half of her power, Mars clicks ever so slightly past Pluto, and then this is the moment where if you did something super impulsive, the wind goes out of your sails so fast that you just hit like this, you come to like this grinding halt, this just like, ah! you be like, and then this is the moment where you look at your life and you're like, oh shit, what the fuck did I just do? That's if you go the super impulsive route. Now, if you go the route where you hang on, and even though this may challenge the way that you feel, you may, yeah, you may feel some type of way about this week, and I'm not going to lie, beloved. And you may, yeah, you may have your gripes. You may feel like there's some injustices. You may feel like people haven't accepted you for who you are. You may be afraid to accept yourself for who you are. You may be afraid to really express yourself. You may be afraid to receive love again. You may be afraid to really manifest. You may feel embarrassed to be like, if I, but yeah, it's like, you know, saying things like, oh, I am financially abundant. I am loved. And saying these sort of things may make you feel weird because you may not necessarily believe them, right? If you can get through all of that challenge and you can get to this moment, believe it or not, it's almost sort of like it's either the wind completely goes out of your sails and it's like a car that's going really, really fast that smashes into a wall. Or this is sort of like that moment where it's like, okay, I made it to this moment. It's, it's in many ways, it kind of, it can be like a bit of a sigh of relief, right? It can be like a sigh of relief. This is like Venus, Venus being going from 29 degrees of Leo to Virgo. It's sort of like she went, you know, it's kind of like she did go, you know, um, fucking skydiving, right? And going into Virgo is when the freaking parachute releases, and then you get that jerk up, and then you're falling down like this, right? Which was funny, too. I was talking to one of my guests at work yesterday, uh, yesterday and he was talking about how he's done, like, over 50 jumps. And I told him, I was like, I want to go uh, skydiving and stuff. But my, the part that I'm actually afraid of the most is when the parachute comes up because you get that jerk up. And I don't even know how, like, my stomach would feel with that, right? So I think that's what that's this uncomfortable moment here is going to happen where we may get, like, that stomach drop. You know what I'm saying? We may feel that little bit of, like, uncomfortability of Venus shifting into Virgo and then Mars clicking ever so slightly past Pluto, right? Where it's that moment, it's like, here's reality. Reality comes and smacks us in the face Sunday night. Smacks us in the face Sunday night. Now, of course, it ends off with the moon squaring over to Jupiter. This is really uh, later on in the evening. And they have similar power scores. You know, the moon in the, it's in Leo and the decan ruled by Jupiter, right? Jupiter over here in Taurus, and both have a square of 120. So there's going to be some tension here, of course. Squares do bring tensions and stuff. But like I said, this is going to be one, once again, you start off the day with, you know, seeing the beauty in your life. And then we, when you get the moon squaring over to Jupiter, it's like even when we get like that stomach drop feeling, even when things feel like they may kind of jerk up and slow down so we can actually like start to put the pieces together a little bit, and not just running a mile a minute and just trying to figure things out by just going over here, over there, over there, trying to do this thing, that thing, that thing. Kind of gives us a chance to kind of slow down, smell the roses, if you will, and kind of just look at the expanse. Kind of be like, okay, all right, so, oh, that makes sense why that thing's over, oh, is kind of messed up because you have like this higher vantage point, right? So this gives us an opportunity in many ways to really start to put the pieces together a little bit more with the square to Jupiter and really start to see, you know, what is really valuable, you know, 
what is really valuable, you know, and what is it that's going to really bring me that joy, you know, not like a temporary fix, like, like a temporary joy that's just going to be quick. You know, this is about, you know, sustainable joy, sustainable happiness, not the quick fix. I got to have it now. I got to do it now kind of energy, but sustainable happiness, right? And that's not to say that sustainable sustainable happiness is not where, okay, you're happy like every single day and you don't experience any sadness at all. That's not what it is. You're going to experience the wider range of emotions every day. But happiness is still like you can accept you, accept you for who you are, right? But you also have the uh, humility and the integrity to make changes when you need to make changes so you can become a better person, right? So you can acknowledge, acknowledge that and being honest with yourself, not putting yourself in situations that take you out of that integrity, right? And building upon that so that your net happiness every day increases, right? Like I said, you're, there's still going to be some challenges. There's still going to be worries. There's still going to be some doubts. But you keep moving forward anyways because the one thing that you are certain of, the one thing that you are certain of is that God loves you. And when you can get to that point right there and you know it, and you believe it and your actions like show that and illustrate that, there is no limit to what you can do. So let's get into the cards. Uh, boom. What did I do right here? Okay. I was about to say, like, <laughs> the cards were like all flipped upside down in other weird ways and shit. So I'm like, trying to figure out what the hell's going on here. <laughs> so. This is definitely a weekend where people are going to go into desperation mode. If they are not careful and do things so they can feel like they can feel like they are a part of something. They can feel like they are worthy. So they can feel some sort of excitement. They're gonna be, this is that weekend. You just want to be careful. You don't want to be doing crazy ass shit to try and make yourself feel better. Because you think it's going to give you and bring the happiness that you want. But I'm telling you, Pluto has the upper hand this weekend. Pretty much the whole damn weekend. So just want to be careful, all right? We have the Wheel of Fortune again, though, so things can absolutely turn in your favor. Things can work out for you. Let's see, what else do we have? Oh, we have the Three of Cups in reverse. Be careful for third parties this weekend. <laughs> Three of Cups in reverse. This is not, you might want to skip that party. You maybe want to skip that invite. You don't want to go overboard. The Three of Cups in Reverse is speaking to a third party that comes in that's going to masquerade itself as something fun and exciting, but really is going to lead you down a path that you don't really want to go. And things may turn in a different kind of direction than you actually want. Bottom of the deck, though, we got the Magician card. So even when I got the, I got the Magician and the Will of Fortune yesterday, right? They both come up again. You saw, you all heard me shuffling this deck, right? But the Three of Cups is in reverse. So, are you going to be like the magician and be able to see through that, you know, that excitement, that fun, that glamour, that is like, oh, you want this, you want this. Beware of third parties this weekend. Beware of third parties this weekend because they can come in and really try and sell you on something. That you have no business purchasing. And if you do purchase that thing, Bluto's gonna come in like the executioner and be like, all right, are you sure about that? But you absolutely have the power to transform your life. Just it has to be done so in integrity. That's the thing about this, in integrity. That's pretty interesting. I'm gonna cut the deck just because. I got those cards again, and I'm just interested, so I'm going to draw another card. Temperance. Temperance. 
taking situations, alchemizing them, realizing that we don't have to just be. And this is this is not something like this is not a, a weekend to just break things off, to just tear things apart. This is a weekend to allow things to summer, transform, and to utilize the powers of nature to transform, not just, you know, okay, I have to do something. So then bam, you just break it, right? Don't be a don't be a barbarian this weekend. Okay. <laughs> don't be a barbarian this weekend, right? This is not the time to do that. You know, it's like, it's definitely, I mean, yeah, I've, I mean, the North Node is an area, so there's an element of like bringing out that warrior within us, but this is like, you know, you got to be a warrior with an integrity. This is not about just don't break formation this weekend. You know what I'm saying? Just because you think you have a better idea, you know, it's like, oh, well, they're telling me to go this way and stuff like that. You know, I'm going to just break off and do this thing over here. And then your commander's like, what the fuck are you doing? He's like, it was like, you clearly have a, I mean, you clearly have a problem with authority and shit like that. I'm telling you this for a reason. I'm not just telling you this because I want to just rule over you and command over you. No, I'm telling you this because this is the best plan of attack. You doing that, you just compromised our position. You just compromised our position because you thought you knew what was right because you think that I'm just trying to command over you and lord over you. No. No, there's a reason why. There's a strategy here. You broke it and now you got to deal with the consequences of it. Be careful about that energy this weekend, beloved. That is going to do it for your weekend astrology forecast. I hope that you all enjoyed it. If you did, please like, share, and subscribe. I definitely appreciate it. If you always have a personal reading with me, beloved, you can follow the link in the description below to my website, jphoenix.com. And as always, y'all take care and stay blessed. I will see you guys on the next video. Peace.